right. Hello, everybody. Good morning. Everybody's awake and got at least three hours of sleep last night, so you're feeling good. Love it. All right. Yeah, this is going to be a fun panel, I can tell. That's good energy. That's great energy. What are you drinking? Very Cappuccino. nice. Cappuccino. Okay. All right. That's the one to order. All right. Well, this is going to be fun uh, because today on this panel, we are talking about joy and humor and play all things that you know marketers are, are using to engage consumers at a time that is pretty serious. And we have a really, really fun panel up here with us as well, and I'm delighted to introduce them. So to my immediate right, your left, is Marissa Jarrett. She's the EVP, Chief Marketing and Sustainability Officer at 7-Eleven. Uh, and one of our favorite clients, yes, yeah, big fan, fan club in the Thank audience. You, Abby. Uh, next to her, we have the man wearing the fun pants at this uh, festival. Of course. Ricardo Fragoso, who is our Chief Creative Officer for Densu Creative Italy. Hello, everybody. Welcome. Buongiorno. All right. And then last but certainly not least, we have Jacob Navok, who is the CEO and founder of Genvid Technologies, which has been described as the interactive Netflix. And that is uh, all I'm going to say, because I don't think I'm going to be able to do justice with words. Actually, I think we have a little video we can roll. So maybe we play that, and uh, that'll introduce Genvid. Roll the vid. Roll the Genvid. No sound, huh? I think we're missing the sound for the folks in the air-conditioned AV booth back there. It's because there we go. it's the fun panel, yeah. so, without the sound. More to come. More to come, exactly, all right. So listen, we all live in changing, challenging, uncertain times. I think everybody here can agree on that. And, uh, and, and in times like that, I think we all desire small moments of joy and play. And in our Dentsu Creative Trends report that we published earlier this year, we talked a little bit about this under the topic of the joy imperative. And part of that was, you know, recognizing that there are a lot of trends in real life that exhibit this and embody this, things like, you know, pickleball, which I think has swept the world by storm. If you don't know what it is, I think they're playing at a couple beaches over uh, at Sport Beach. But um, pickleball, kind of a silly, fun game. Um, uh, you know, digital surrealism and silliness. We see a fair amount of that in our social feeds. There's some of that we've seen on stage. Uh, and I was actually struck last night by uh, one of the jury presidents uh, when we were at the awards show said, you know, I was really just craving work that could just make me feel good for a little bit. And so I'd love to ask each of you, you know, is this something you're thinking about when you're looking at, you know, what are you producing and how are you communicating your brand to consumers? Can you talk a little bit more about what you're seeing in, from consumers and culture that's leading you to do work that leverages joy and play and humor? Marissa? Yeah, I mean, for our customer, the 7-Eleven customer, we, we describe their mindset as a self-made mindset. And in general, they're working so hard, as you would imagine. They're, they're trying to work smarter and not harder, but they're also kind of on this journey. And 7-Eleven plays an important role in their life in helping them get from point A to point B, so very practically speaking. But also, 7-Eleven, as you might know, sells some products that um, create joy and are fun. And that's an important insight into our customer. Like, they're not just looking to work and work and work. They need things that help them enjoy the ride. And so joy and humor is an important part of what we're doing. And I'll just say, I know, a little teaser, we're going to talk about Slurpee today. But Slurpee is a great example of a product that is a very joyful product that elicits humor and laughter and really serves an important, maybe not as much functional need, but I would say emotional need, importantly. It's even fun to say, Slurpee. Slurpee. Exactly. 
All right, Ricardo, what are you seeing? Yes. Uh, now, first of all, uh, let me tell you that I I think that I am the least fun person in the world. So, and I don't. And You're I, doing great. I don't You're like doing great. I don't like fun fun work in story. general. Uh, but I end up doing it. So it's probably my karma. You know, I, I don't yeah. know. It's like I resist fun, ah. but it gets. Keeping on. Fun time to you anyway. <laughs> but that said, no, I think honestly, mm, yeah, I agree with you. Of course, we all agree we are uh, living uh, heavy times, no, in a way. And I think that the people are more and more looking for, uh, let's say, more uh, uh, indir indirect ways of, of tackling it. If I think about sustainability, for, for example, um, I saw a couple of works this year like fix, uh, fit chicks, for example, no? the Nike Plus of, of chickens. Uh, and I think it's like this kind of, uh, of like treating, treating a certain question that is like, for example, having a healthier chicken no? or having healthier eggs in a way that is like by counting the steps. No? This is like a way that make it less heavy, less serious, but very, very in interesting. No? And the same is like, for example, mammoth meatball. No? Talking about um, a lab developed uh, meat uh, by going at 3,600 years uh, uh, past in history, finding some DNA, recreating. So there is an entire storytelling that is much more light than just saying you have, uh, you have to eat uh, lab developed meat because otherwise you're going to feel bad. This is exactly what you are looking for. Maybe it's because I'm talking about. Um, climate change and sustainability, that there is a storm coming, but I hope it's gonna, <laughs> we're gonna resist. Thank you. Know, you. What, I, what I like about what you just said is I think it's a reminder that we can tackle serious and important subjects, but in ways that don't always feel so heavy. So that's yeah. a nice insight. Yeah. Uh, Jacob. So we build interactive content. We work with a lot of major intellectual properties to do that, shows where the audience can influence and change things. One of the projects that we built was Pac-Man Community. We had millions of players worldwide from the United States to India, Mexico, Brazil, all over. And we spent days of my personal life prior to this product launching, because it, it was launching um, on Facebook worldwide. Mark Zuckerberg himself personally announced the project. And we were very, very fearful because the audience could create their own Pac-Man content for the first time. They could create mazes and share them with audiences that they were going to do really offensive things. Like, we spent a lot of time preparing for that and making the run books. We found very little of that. And what we found was a lot of humor and memes and, like, love and all sorts of really interesting things. The amount of Pac-Man mazes that cre got created on positivity versus negativity, massively different. I would say for every um, positive, you know, ten mazes that we had, we only had maybe one negative. It was a surprising data point. So a sign that consumers are craving that, and actually maybe our intentions tend to be more joyful and positive than we initially give people credit for. Uh, yeah, exactly. I've got another kind of interesting data point there, too. So we did The Walking Dead, which you saw there. I mean, Walking Dead's been number one you know, cable show for years, and that's a very serious show where a lot of characters die. And so for the first time in our show, which was penned by Robert Kirkman, who created The Walking Dead, created new characters, new scenario, the audience could choose whether characters would survive or not. And we were prepared for mass death. And they <laughs> saved all of them. And the VP of creative at Skybound, who did the project with us, Skybound is the owner of The Walking Dead, went on a TV show and said, wow, it's renewed my faith in humanity because all they want to do is make sure everybody lives. I love that. That's amazing. So, all right, so we've talked a little bit about the why. I'd love to tackle a little bit the how. How does joy come through in work? And what are the, what are the cues that indicate joy? You know, I think um, it's everything from kind of the storyline, the characters, the tone, the music, the experience. Uh, talk a little bit about that in the work that you each have done and, and what some of those are. Sure. So let's take Slurpee as an example. We uh, start with the product experience, which is a joyful, fun, kind of silly slurping type of experience. I think that grounds us first and kind of what the work probably needs to emulate and, and project and, and show. 
Um, it informs a lot of what we do, particularly from a brand purpose and personality perspective. So you will see through color, through audio design, through character, through storytelling, joy is a big part of that, and humor as well. And I think we're going to show the new campaign. Yeah, so we've maybe got we do that and talk news. a little bit more. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Why don't we show? I think um, I think we have one of the Slurpee ads. Can we play Cherry? And turn up the volume yeah, really crank, loud. Yeah, crank the volume. Woo! should have gotten those outfits and just walked down the crystal with yeah. our cherry red jumpsuits. That's definitely a fun outfit. I exactly. really wish they were under our seats, <laughs> like too. an Oprah thing. I like, look too. down and you'll find them. I know. I hey, to... you guys want to see one more? Yeah. All right, let's show one more. I think we've got... Yeah, there we go. One lazy Sunday morning All the breezes You saw the, I know it's awesome work. Congrats to the, the density team for helping us put that together too. It was pretty amazing. But you guys saw the dollop at the beginning, that mnemonic. That's, a, that's kind of a flowy type of vibe that's informed by the product experience, how you make the product, you pour the product, and honestly how customers have told us they feel when they consume the product. And so it, it has a nice product connection to the emotional benefit. And we've really taken that and played with it and brought it to life in a way that, um, you know, reflects what our customers are looking for, this moment of levity in an environment that feels so serious and heavy. I love that. Beautiful example. All right, Ricardo, how is this coming to life in your work? What are the ways that you show joy? What are some of the cues? I mean, when I, when I can't be serious, sometimes it happens. <laughs> when joy <laughs> sneaks up on you. <laughs> Uh, yeah, now I'm going to tell you a little bit about Forza Canada that you may know. Um, it's, um, it's strange because uh, honestly it's uh, very much related to what I was uh, telling you before. Uh, th there was the Qatar World Cup and, and of course it was super delicate. Okay, uh, And uh, brands had to decide where to stand. No, It was like either criticizing it or uh, or in a way trying to still uh, communicate, being into it, but with a different uh, point of view. Okay, and here humor was really a key uh, capable of allowing us to talk about the World Cup uh, without being, uh, let's say, involved in a super complex situation, ethical situation and so on. And of course, like I would have preferred in a way <laughs> to be serious and do the forgotten team, yeah. <laughs> because I believe in the fact that criticizing would also be very interesting. But here, our brand, Mondelez brand, Fonsis, was in a very delicate situation because they, they were the main partner of the Italian team, and they were out of the World Cup right away. Okay, And so the fact of coming up with the idea of supporting another team, so creating another entire uh, occasion to, uh, to be um, what Italians are like super good to be, you know, like so crazy passionate supporters, but for another team, created this joyful situation, very light and capable of connecting with the World Cup in a way that was acceptable and successful. Okay, and I, I suggest we, we have a yeah. look at the case study Let's so play it. Let's you can see a little favorites. bit more about it. I'd love to see that. Let's roll Fonzies.
case probably like a half a dozen times and I still just have a giant smile on my face every time I watch it which is exactly the intention absolutely absolutely now I think that here Joy and Humor were the only the only um, solution and uh, so well connected with the Italian let's say spirit and uh, and tone of voice no so it, that's why I think it works perfectly right. in that case right. thank you that's awesome um Jacob talk a little bit about I think the experience, and what do people experience when they're actually playing? I think that's very different than watching and sitting back. Well, it's interesting to look at that previous video because one of the things that you see there is that giving something for people to root for, or giving them something to cheer for, and we think about that constantly in our content. How do we create content where you have a purpose as a viewer? I mean. There's a big difference between I'm sitting back and I'm watching and I'm actually able to interact and change the show and the content and make an effect. And in order for them to care as an audience in what they're watching and want to affect it, you need to give them something to cheer for. Um, so in every piece of content, whether it is action, whether it is comedy, whether it's something like Pac-Man where you're just creating and sharing, or even in something like Silent Hill, which is the horror content that we've got going, we're trying to create moments of hope and trying to create moments of joy for people to cheer for. And actually, it works really well in horror. You'd be surprised um, because horror can be very depressing if you don't have the hope that people can survive, if you don't have the hope that something better is going to come around the corner. And so every time we're creating these, we're creating aspects for the audience to be able to redeem a character, have an arc for that character that is positive and have an arc for that character where they will make it through to the end. Because if they don't, we as humans feel purposeless. So we, we build it into everything that we do. I love that, that's great. Um, I am curious why we don't see more advertising that is joyful and humorous. Again, we talk about things being so serious, and and I saw um, in our in our trends report we quoted the the happiness report, which said that ninety percent of people are more likely to remember ads that are funny, and seventy two percent of people would choose a humorous brand over the competition. Despite this, only twenty percent of brands report using humor in offline ads and 18% report use it in online. Any thoughts on why? Why, R Ricardo, Mar Marissa? Because I think you can get it wrong. So it's a risk and, uh, you know, it's a pretty tough environment out there right now. So how you approach humor, you know, really matters. You have to have the insight right. You have to understand your objective and, and really uh, be prepared for it to land well and, and also maybe not so well. And I think with joy, the issue there is sometimes joy can be um, misused, let's say. It can become a catch-all for a feel-good anything, and that's just not authentic in most cases. So I think really diving into, again, the insight around the consumer or the customer or the brand and how that comes to life in an authentic way. Well, I think, honestly, I agree. I think that actually humor and joy are more um, difficult to handle. They can be super dangerous. And, and so in a, in a context where brands are very often accused of being superficial, uh, it's, a, it's a risk to take and you have to do it with the right instruments. If I think about your campaign, it's really into craft. 
amazing craft, you know, the music, the experience that you have, the tone of voice is so right that then it's under control. No? And you can have many ways of doing it. Um, I think about the Grand Prix in entertainment for, for music, Apple, about disabilities. No? It's, it's like it's not actually humor here, but the, there is a sort of lightness that they achieved thanks to, to music. No? Uh, humor doesn't mean it's a joke, right? Exactly, exactly. Uh, and then it depends also on the context. If you think there are some, some situations, think about the Super Bowl where it's normally accepted to be a little bit more into joy and humor because the context, it's about sport, no? And it's, a, let's say, a national, global celebration, no? Whereas there are so many other contexts where it's, it's not expected. And, and so brands have to take a step forward and, and take the risk. But if they take the risk, I think it's super important that they, they, they take it with the right partner and the partner has to be in control of all the elements that create the right situation, the craft, the tone of voice. Yeah, I think the line between um, joy and er, like bland earnestness is also really important. And I think a lot of brands don't hit that mark. Yeah. The authenticity question is very important, right? On the one hand, if, if you're the one creating the humor, well, you don't want people to perceive you as a joke, right? And so you're always nervous about that. and so. Whenever we've done it, we've leaned into audience-generated content and the promotion of that because it feels a lot more authentic. So when we were doing Pac-Man, we were constantly pushing and promoting the mazes that were created that were fun and silly and joyful. And especially a lot of memes, like very popular social memes. Anytime we saw something like that, we went up, we put it out at the top of the leaderboards, we put it into our marketing for it. Um, but even with something like, um, like our horror series, like Silent Hill, um, we found users on TikTok were taking the trailer and doing really funny things with it. So in, in this series, you can choose whether characters are going to be redeemed or suffer or damned. And so somebody on TikTok cut a version of the trailer with a Wendy Williams clip where she just looks at her audience and goes, clap if you think they should suffer like this. It was so funny that we went and we put that on the top of all of our marketing, just sharing what people on TikTok were doing. We wouldn't have ever edited that ourselves, yeah. right? But if the community is doing that and they think it's funny and it's getting a lot of audience reactions, we're definitely going to push it because they're connecting to it in a unique and interesting way. Yeah, that's great. All right, so um, we're almost out of time. I have one last question. It doesn't have to be connected to Joy, though it can be, which is, um, here we are on Thursday, uh, second to last day of Cannes, and uh, as you've been going to the Palais, looking at the work, listening to seminars, having conversations all week, I'd love for each of you to share just one either piece of work or insight, something you've learned that will stick with you after you've left the south of France. We'll start at the end. Jacob, we'll start with you. We'll work this way. Oh, that's a good question. I mean, I think that this week we've seen that despite everything that's been very difficult in 2022 into 2023, that consumers now more than ever actually do want that humor and joy. And we're seeing that as some of the strongest reactions to the, um, to the creativity that we've been seeing this week. So that's probably my biggest takeaway from it. And it connects directly to what we're doing here. Ricardo. Oh, Marissa. I, I'll go next. I think... Um uh, this is my first time visiting Cannes, and so I, I wasn't totally sure what to expect. I'm, I'm actually a, a finance person by training who's kind of broken in or snuck into the marketing world. So I was, uh, and I'm a big believer in creativity as the engine or oxygen in an organization to drive growth. However, I was, I was really expecting a very, very like unbalanced bias towards the creativity here at Cannes, and what I've observed actually is a really good balance between art and science and how we can use them together to create better, bigger ideas that ultimately have a much bigger impact, either on the consumer or society or the business. And so that's, that's really reaffirmed uh, a lot of what I believe about the work that we do. And, and then secondly, I'll just say, I am just blown away by the talent in our industry and just how fortunate we all are to do what we get to do. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I connect with uh, what you were saying. Um, 
on the presence of joy uh, at the end of the day. And I think that this is a super positive signal because without joy, it means that we are hopeless. Whereas I, I think that actually um, we are seeing the first signs of a, let's say, shared conscience. And I'm getting very serious now. So you see that joy, it's a serious matter. Uh, a shared conscience on the fact that we can improve in many fields as brands, as creativity actors, we can improve with more um, involvement and talent and, and have a real positive impact at every level. And, uh, and I think that this is super important because I remember I discussed it with like some uh, associations in the past years and uh, their, their split change in, uh, in f from, let's say, campaigns that were uh, absolutely negative and heavy towards campaigns that gave hope, no? But to have hope, you have to have this kind of like uh, light on a voice that doesn't make you feel completely crushed under the responsibility of the world, no? If we, if we do one small thing, little by little, we're gonna change the world positively. And I believe that can is a very good moment to remind ourselves that we can do it and uh, we are all together into this. By the way, I see a lot of uh, members of the Denso family here with us. So I wanted also to say bravo this year because we are doing great, you are doing great, so. Thank you. Well, just to, to wrap up all of that, I mean, I think um, I feel a tremendous amount of hope because of all the creativity we've seen at this festival. I feel hope for our industry. I feel a tremendous amount of momentum for this organization. Uh, I feel, uh, you know, a lot of, um, frankly, hope for what creativity can do outside of the industry and for the world. And... Um, you know, I, I, I have been validated time and time again this week that creativity is a multiplier and it is a legal means of unfair advantage. And uh, it's been a pleasure to host you all on this panel and thank you all for being such a joyful and enthusiastic audience. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. And everybody enjoy the rest of Can. Have fun, be safe. Thank you. Bye.